Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Kai and today I have for you this fun beachy summery design. This was made using Blue Sky polishes. So Blue Sky is a nail polish company. They reached out to me and offered to send me their collection of polishes. They actually have a few different collections. They're sort of like um, Madame Glam where they come out with new collections every season. So I believe they're going to be releasing their summer collections soon. This is one of their classic collections and I thought I'd just swatch them and do a design for you all. So here are the 12 polishes that they sent to me. I made a mistake and I accidentally swatched two of them off camera because I didn't realize I wasn't recording. But the brand is Blue Sky. They sell products across the world. So they do ship worldwide. You can look at all of the ingredients here, which I do appreciate that they have them on the back so that you can take a look. That way, if there's anything that you know you're allergic to or you're trying to avoid a certain ingredient, it's right there. They come in 15 ml bottles and I believe they're $12.50 each or it's $120 for the whole collection. So these are the two that I had accidentally swatched already. So there's Pastel Blossom and Blue Danube, which I might be pronouncing that wrong. I believe that's a river, right? Someone correct me if I'm wrong. But those are those two colors. This is Lotus Pink, which might be my second favorite color in this collection. It is a super creamy, cool toned pastel pink. As you'll see here, it does require two layers of polish for full opacity. What I noticed when using these polishes is that most of them required at least two coats, some of them three. They self-level really nicely though. I will say it's a very gorgeous creamy formula. They are just a tiny bit on the sheer side, especially these darker colors here. So like this deep red, it's a super pretty shade. I'm actually very partial to like this sort of magenta-y red color. But as you can see, it definitely needs at least two coats. I actually opted for three for maximum opacity. And that is something that I noticed throughout most of the like darker colors is that you did need more coats to get full opacity. So if that's something that you are looking to avoid, I would stick with just their lighter colors because I will say their lighter colors are absolutely gorgeous. I think they have really nice tones to the colors. Like they're not too vibrant. They're also not too dull either. I think that if you go on their website, you'll find any color that you need. They have a really wide variety but I would stick again with maybe like the lighter colors if you're looking for more of like a one to two coat coverage. If you don't mind layering your colors, then definitely their darker colors are also gorgeous. This one is Tropics, which was a really pretty like peachy, pinky summer shade, almost leaning towards like the neon side. The formula of these was really nice. It was very creamy. As you can see, it self-levels pretty evenly, even though it does have some spots where, again, you just need two coats to get full opacity. Now, I had never tried this brand before. I like doing these reviews if a brand reaches out to me, just because I personally want to see what's out there, try different brands, see what works best for me. And I like going to YouTube to look for swatches, whatnot, if I'm looking to buy a product. So I'm hoping that by doing these kinds of videos, it helps any of you who might have been looking into Blue Sky or who might have been looking for a product or a color and you were having trouble finding some information. I always find live swatches are so much more helpful than product pictures because I'll be honest, there are times when I've purchased a gel polish and just because of the way that it was photographed or because of the screen coloring, it was definitely not the color that I thought I was ordering. So I love watching swatching videos and I hope this one helps you all. They're not sponsoring me or anything. Like I'm not getting paid to say anything about this. They just, they sent me the package with the polishes, asked me to try them out. And they actually asked me to do a tutorial on Instagram for them. They didn't even ask for like, YouTube video. I just thought it would be helpful. So these are my genuine thoughts. 
I really like the shade ranges. I would say in this collection specifically, the darker reds, they are a little bit repetitive. So if you're looking to not spend $120 on the whole collection, you can buy them individually and maybe just pick out the colors that you do like. But otherwise, I think the colors in this collection um, are actually really cohesive. Like you can use them together well. They're a great range of like pinks with a couple of those blues thrown in there. Now that I'm looking at these, they almost are like a perfect 4th of July collection. Not that I think that was on purpose. I actually received these a couple weeks ago at this point and I am just getting to the video. But yeah, they're a really nice set of like pinks, blues, and they have a really pretty off-white that we'll be getting to soon. This pink here is absolutely stunning. It is like the perfect bright Barbie pink. I love it. I really want to use it. I don't know exactly in what kind of set yet. I have so many design ideas coming up that I'm just so backed up on like products to try, designs to try. But um, if any of you have any ideas on how I could use that gorgeous Barbie pink, drop a comment below, let me know. I love talking to you guys in the comments. I do this channel because I don't know a lot of people who do nails in real life. So I love brainstorming and chit chatting about ideas. This maroon color, I really, really like. It's a bit more of like a muted maroon, almost like a brown. And I love this color. I do wish that it was just a teeny bit more opaque because I did have to do like three coats to get full full opacity I felt like but I love the color it's gorgeous if any of you have tried blue sky let me know what you think down in the comments below I will say I do like that they have the swatches already on top of the bottles I absolutely love when brands do that because it makes it really easy to just pick it up off your shelf and know exactly what color you are grabbing. And I will say that these swatches on the top are very, very true to the polish itself. Sometimes a bottle will have like a sticker on it or something that's meant to show what color it is, and then it's not very accurate, and so it's not that much of a help in the first place. So I do appreciate that these swatches are very true to the color in the bottle and that they are very visible, which makes picking out your polishes easy. I actually don't think I have a shade like this. It's just a really nice peachy pink, so I'm very happy to have this one. And this blue here is probably one of my new favorite pastel blue shades. It's called Cyanine C or Cyanine. I believe it's Cyanine C, but it is this absolutely stunning cool toned, almost like a periwinkle blue. It is so creamy it does require two coats but that's okay this polish went on like a dream it is absolutely stunning i will definitely be using this in like my angel rococo set i do really like the born pretty color that i had been using but i'm running out and unfortunately they had discontinued that color so i'm very excited to have this polish and i probably will be purchasing this one again because it is just so gorgeous. It is a very much like true sky blue. And this is the last polish, but another one that I probably will be reordering. This is called Mushroom White, and it is just a super nice, like slight off-white. I, for some reason, am drawn to off-whites, sometimes like a pure white, especially in a cream formula just seems really harsh to me, so I do love a toned down white, and this was a really, really nice off-white that wasn't too off, like it was like one tone removed, but it does require two coats, so it is a tiny bit sheer. And here are all of the colors together. Again, I think it's a really nice mix of like reds, pinks, the blue is gorgeous, that light blue. The dark blue was a little bit sheer, like that's, I think, three coats there, maybe just two on the swatch, and you can still see through it just a little bit. So one thing to note, I would say, is their darker colors are, again, just a tiny bit more sheer. They do need to be built up if you are planning on ordering those, 
but their lighter colors are absolutely gorgeous and creamy. So for this design, I am going with like a beach themed set. Here's some of the inspiration on the side here. I have done beach looks before and I've done this water method that I'm going to show here along with the shawl method, but I wanted to revisit it with these new colors. I also just recently saw um, Krista from Out of Orbit Nails do a beach set and it inspired me to try another beach design. I have been watching her channel lately. She does amazing sets of press-ons, so go check her out if you would like. Here I'm doing just a base coat of that cyanide blue. As you can see, it is so, so pretty on the nail too. It levels out really nicely, very smooth, no streaks, even though there is a slight bit of sheerness. I don't mind sheerness if it's not streaky. If a polish is both sheer and leaves streaks, it means it is harder to build up that color to get to full opacity. That wasn't necessarily a problem with the lighter colors in this collection. They, again, needed two coats, but they self-leveled super nicely and they had very even color coverage, which is something that I'm always looking for in a polish. Here I'm going in with one coat of that mushroom white. I typically like to have like two nails be the same design or at least similar designs and then the other three be a different design. And then one nail is usually a different base color just to act as kind of like an accent nail. And I like doing that as either the ring or the middle finger. So here is coat two of both colors that mushroom white and the blue and i'm doing something here called back painting and this is something that is typical of press on nails you can't really paint from the tip towards the nail bed on a client because you know obviously the nails attach to their hand but one of the nice things about press ons is that you can back paint i will do this to get a really even coverage for polishes that I want to be fully opaque. I think it just spreads the color out really nicely. If you do one coat of polish painting normally from the nail bed to the tip of the nail, and then if you do one coat back painted from the tip of the nail back to the nail bed. In my experience with painting, I've always noticed that wherever I start painting, so wherever I lay the brush down first, the color coverage and the texture is always just a little bit more uneven than where I end the, the paint stroke because the end is where you're like smoothing out the brush over the nail. So back painting just helps me get really nice even coverage across the entire nail. And that's the base colors done. Now I'm going to do that water effect where it looks like it has depth to it, where it looks like it's moving. So I'm laying out some of that mushroom white. I thought I would need to sheer it out a little bit with a base gel in order to achieve this. I thought it would be a little bit too opaque to put right over the blue. I was wrong though. Um, I mix up this color here and unfortunately I put it on the nail and I see that it's not really standing out as much as I wanted it to. If you're doing this effect, you want to use a white that is slightly sheer, but not quite this sheer. You do want the effect to still show through. So I wipe that off and then I put on just a regular coat of that mushroom white as it is because it is already just ever so slightly sheer. I'm laying on a really thin coat here. You don't want it too thick either. Otherwise you're going to add way too much bulk to the nail. Once you have your coat on, you want to keep it uncured and then just dot on some base gel. What this is gonna do is it's going to spread out from the center of wherever you dot it on and create like a, a ripple effect on the nail. It's gonna spread that clear out so that the white parts get pushed in between those clear dots and look very watery and organic. When I'm doing this, because I'm layering so much gel on the nail, I do like to flip it over and let it kind of pool towards the center to form almost like a natural apex. That's why you'll see me flipping the nail over every once in a while to achieve this look. 
It is a very simple way to achieve something that I think looks quite difficult actually. So I love this technique. Uh, you can use it for a lot of different things, not just water. And make sure you're using a base gel here, not necessarily a top gel. I personally like using a base gel because it does distribute the white polish, I think, just a little bit better. And I tend to go for something thinner. If you have a top gel that's too thick, it's going to not move as much and then be harder to get that really like natural looking, organic, uh, streaking in the polish. So here I am just doing the pinky nail, same method, putting on a base coat of that mushroom white, and then going in with my dotting tool. There's another really cool technique I've seen to make realistic looking water that is a bit more 3D. It's where you take like a 3D gel and you put a layer of it over the nail, and then you use some sort of implement to kind of like put divots and indents into the 3D gel so that it looks like it's waves or ripples in water. I wanted to try it, but I also wanted to keep this set relatively simple since I knew I would be swatching all the colors at the beginning. I didn't want the video to be too, too crazy long, but there are just so many cool designs and techniques out there right now for doing nail art. It makes me really excited. It's also a bit overwhelming, I will say. I have a laundry list of different nail designs that I've really been wanting to try and just not enough time to do them, but it makes me excited for doing nail art in the future. So I'm just letting those nails sit upside down to make sure that they are pooling correctly before giving them a full cure. And now I'm just taking some of that deep red color flashy and I'm using a base gel to lay a layer of it on the ring finger. This is to get that shell effect. You want to lay down a thin layer of base coat. I would use one that is a little bit more runny, not super thick. Don't cure it and then you want to take whatever shell color that you want to use, your secondary color, and you're just going to paint stripes into that uncured gel. For this one, I'm doing like a diagonal stripe. You can do it straight up and down. I've done that before for nail designs, but I am borrowing inspiration from that set that I showed early. And I really liked how this was like a diagonal striped look. So I'm laying that color down in the wet base gel. You don't cure it. So you wanna keep this uncured and then you wanna pull a long striper brush, a long liner brush through that gel towards the base of the nail. In doing that, you're kind of like blending those colors together and you're creating these really nice arches in the stripes. I absolutely love this method. I don't know who first came up with it. I saw it floating around last year, but I think it just makes the prettiest natural looking shell design. And you can use stripes of different colors too. So you can layer colors together to create even more dimension. So for the thumb and the middle finger, I wiped off the tacky layer. I'm gonna top coat these because I am going to be using like the sugaring method with some acrylic powder to create some 3D texture. So I give these a nice top coat and then I'm gonna full cure that in place. You wanna top coat these first because if you're going for like the textured sugared look, you don't top coat on top of that or at least I personally don't because I like the texture. So I get my little powder saver here, my glitter saver, and I'm just using like a regular clear acrylic. You can really use any that you want. This one I use specifically for this method, so it's its own little jar. And I'm painting out the shape of a starfish with that mushroom white. So I start with the initial star shape and then I just make the arms a little bit thicker. I did make a mistake here and I think that is that I used a little bit too much of the white gel. In the future, I think what I would do is lay down the shape like this, go ahead and cure it and then lay down another layer of wet polish on top of that and then use that sugaring method because the way I did it here, I really wanted those starfish to pop and be 3D. So I put on quite a thick layer of that mushroom white. You can see here that I'm like 
adding even more but i think it was too much polish and not enough of the acrylic powder so i would do one layer cure it add another layer on top and then do the sugaring method i did go in with a little bit of that flashy color to tie that color into some of the other nails and did kind of like a little a little design on the starfish now i'm taking that acrylic powder and i'm just very lightly dusting it over that wet polish and then i go ahead and cure it for a full 60 seconds for the middle finger i wanted to do like a little sand dollar same method i lay down the mushroom white i paint in some of the like veins from the sand dollar and then i dust it with that clear acrylic same issue here though i really wanted like a, a thick layer so I go in with extra of that paint and I just I think it was too much paint for the amount of acrylic powder I used but that's okay we learn that's what this whole process is is me trying designs and hopefully helping you all by allowing you to learn from my mistakes some of you already know that I live in Florida I did not grow up in Florida. I grew up in Alaska and I ended up moving quite a few times in my life. I lived in Pennsylvania for a while for school and then I spent some time in Jacksonville and finally ended up here in Orlando. And one of the biggest reasons for me wanting to move south out of Alaska was because I'm a huge beach fan. I don't go as much as I would like because Orlando, if you're familiar, is kind of like internal florida it is about an hour 15 minutes from the beach so i don't make it down there as often as i would like but i absolutely love sea life i when i was younger really wanted to be a marine biologist and then i made the mistake of reading books about what's actually in the ocean and i'll be honest um it scared me i hate open water like i'm a big chicken when it comes to being on a tiny boat on the surface of really deep water but i am certified to scuba dive so i have been on probably like 10 dives in my lifetime not that many i do enjoy that though because something about like being under the water on the ocean floor feels a lot more secure for some reason it's almost like you have places to hide in the coral reefs so I do really like scuba diving, I like snorkeling, and just seeing the variety of fish out in the sea, and seeing sea stars, and all sorts of different marine life. That is my absolute favorite, and I really should get to the beach more. So to finish off this technique, I am just brushing away any excess powder, and those nails are ready to go for the next step. Next up, I'm going to be top coating everything that's not already been top coated because I will be doing some 3D swirls. So I add a nice thick layer of top coat on these nails because they do get a little bit textured from the little droplets of base gel that we use to create that water look. I would probably recommend like a thicker top coat. I'm using the Beatles top coat, which is thick, but it is runnier than say like the D gel signature top coat or even like the yogo zombie top coat those two are my favorite thick top coats um they're just really nice and they hold their shape really well while smoothing out everything to the perfect glossy finish i'll link everything that i mentioned in the description down below i am a sweetie nail supply ba so i do have an affiliate code it is get pressed for 10 percent off if you would like to pick up any of the products from Sweetie Nail Supply. I really appreciate everyone who's ordered, by the way. It's totally blown me away the amount of support I've received both on my channel and through my affiliate link. So thank you so much. It is really helping me fuel my nail addiction, especially considering I work on a teacher salary. So now I'm going in with my favorite 3D art gel. This is the Crazy Top Thick by Jin B. I just love this stuff so much. It's perfect for 3D swirls, for any sort of like last step texturing that you wanna do on a nail. 
It's great for swirls because it holds its shape pretty well. It's non-wipe, which means you can use it to encapsulate your gemstones, your rhinestones, and make sure that nothing is going to snag. I just love this stuff so much. It is a little bit more on the pricey side. So this jar here of 40 grams is $39 from Sweetie Nail Supply, but if you use a 10% off code, then it's only like 35. And honestly, $35 for 40 grams really isn't that bad. I've not even gone through a whole tub of this and I've had it for probably over a year now. So highly recommend. I'm just adding on the shell swirls here. You wanna start at the free edge with a really thick dollop and then drag it towards the center and let that line get skinnier as you go. For the other nails, I just go in and I do some more like random 3D swirls and I do some little like water droplets on the nails. One thing this design does really remind me of is one of my favorite books as like an older teen, a young adult, um, and that was Nicholas Sparks' Suzanne's Diary for Nicholas. If you have seen The Notebook, then you would be familiar with his work. He is an author and he writes like romance novels along with some other things actually. I don't think it's just like romance stories, but I used to read all of his books after I saw The Notebook in high school and fair warning, a lot of them are sad. If you've seen The Notebook, you probably cried about it at some point. And I will warn you, I cried way more over Suzanne's Diary for Nicholas than I did over The Notebook, but it is just a really beautiful story and it is set on a beach I believe outside of New York so this just really gives me those sort of vibes and it makes me want to read that book again. I don't read for fun as much anymore as I wish I could. I just frankly don't have the time. Usually when I'm reading it's for school so it's usually when I am rereading something that I'm going to be teaching the kids because I teach high school English, or I'm reading something because I'm still in classes to get my master's in teaching. So I don't read as much for fun anymore, but I did really used to love reading romance stories, all of the cheesy ones. Oh my gosh, my high school years were full of teenage angst and romance, but hey whatever makes you happy whatever makes you read i'm a big proponent of like not judging people for what they read especially for what they read for fun sometimes we just want to relax when we read yes i love the classics yes i love the books that are a little bit more you know intellectually stimulating they have a little bit more depth to them there are some things that you have to analyze but i'm also a big fan of just like reading for fun, reading comics. I don't really read comics, but I know some of my kids do at school. And I'm always going to encourage that because any sort of reading is going to benefit them in the long run. And I don't think we always need to focus just on like what is the most deep thought inspiring books. Yes, those are important. Yes, I read those with them, but I don't think it should be the end all be all. For my classes, I try to mix like the recommended books with some more contemporary authors, some books that are just a little bit more modern to give them a break from like Shakespeare or something like that. I do try to do some contemporary texts. I also have them look at other forms of storytelling. We have like a short unit on visual storytelling where I actually let them analyze symbolism and color and how different visual cues can help you tell a story in a music video and that's always a really fun project that most of them enjoy doing not all some of them don't like doing anything but most of them enjoy doing the music video analysis and then they remember what symbolism is they remember what personification is if they find an example in their favorite music video and so I really try to uh, like engage the kids on their level as much as possible because I understand that not everyone loves reading Shakespeare. Although I do try to make Shakespeare fun. 
I don't think people realize that Shakespeare was really like the author of the people. And a lot of his plays were actually quite um, dirty. Like he had so many innuendos in his plays. He was a masterful writer when it came to wordplay. And so a lot of the things in his plays are quite inappropriate. And it's always funny to watch some of the jokes just go like right over the kids' heads because Shakespeare is very hard to read, but there is a, a sense of satisfaction that the kids get when they do start understanding Shakespeare and when they do have that moment where they read something and they actually get what it means. It takes a long time. We read Shakespeare almost every year in high school. They do one Shakespeare play with me and most of the time they don't get it fully until like their 12th grade year but that's okay because that moment that they do get it is always really satisfying for them because they feel like they've achieved something and that's part of the reason that i love teaching so back to Niels after that super long rant i am just going in and covering up all those pearls so that they don't lose their shine with the Jinbi Ivy Multiliner. This is awesome because it has that liner brush built in so I don't have to dirty a brush and clean it later. I think if I were to do this set again, I would put the pearls on to start with before I top coat it and just top coat over the pearls. But since I didn't really have a design template to go off of, I didn't know where I wanted the pearls to sit. So for this initial design, I placed them at the end and so I'm just sealing them in to make sure they retain their shine. And here is the finished look. I'm pretty happy with this overall. Um, usually I throw like a ton of products at a look and I'm using a lot of different polishes, but this one only used, let's see, the three blue sky polishes, the base gel, top coat, and that Jin B. So I'm pretty happy with how this came out. It is a more simplified design, something um, that I wanted to challenge myself with. And overall, I am happy with how it looks. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know what you thought about the Blue Sky Polishes down below. Hopefully this helps you if you are looking to purchase some of them. I really appreciate everybody who is subscribed to this channel, who comments and engages with my content. I'm really loving what I'm doing with nails and I'm so happy to be able to share it with you all. So thank you once again. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your weekend and I will see you next time. Bye.